Right, so this video is just going to be a quick one. And what it is, is it's going to be, as the title will be, it's going to be changing your SQL statements to SQLI. Okay, so SQL statements like um, MySQL query or MySQL numrows have been deprecated as of PHP 5.5. So they advise that you use MySQL I or PDO. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to change your MySQL statements to MySQL I. Okay, so I thought I'd do this as um, a lot of people, even even me at first, thought oh, it's going to be such a pain in the ass to change. But I'm going to show you how you can make it not be so painful. And um, what I'm going to show you as well will help you if it ever changes again. Right, so first what I'll show you. So I've got this file here, I've just called it SQL I PHP. And what I've got in here is I have a few functions. So I've got a function for making a query, which, well, a call really, it could be uh, update, delete, or whatever you want. So we've got a function for that. We've got a function for the num rows. And we've got a function for fetching the array. Right. So I'll explain, pardon me, I'll explain them quickly. So the call would be to insert, update, select, okay? Num rows would be where you check are there any results for the current statement that you've done. If so, proceed. If not, you know, you can exit. And then fetch array will be, so there is a result. Okay, let's get an array of all the, of all the data and then spit it out to the page as you like. So... Let's go to example.php. What we've got here at the top is we are requ requiring this, and this is our connection to the database. So I'll quickly show you that. And what we've got here is we're requiring a file in here called constants. I'm not going to show you that because it's all of my um it's all of my connection details, but just know that within there we've got this server, which is normally localhost your database username, your database password then we've got your database name so those four things, that's all that is in my constants, they could easily be defined here but I've just got them in this other file because obviously you don't want to be sharing that with people, especially in a video on YouTube right so anyway yes, yeah, so what we're doing here is just ignore this for now because this is what we're going to use in the end so for now we've got our standard SQL so what we're doing is we're connecting, making the database connection so anyone who's watching this will just know how to do this. And two is selecting the database to use, right? So it's simple enough. So that's all that's in there. This other one require the SQLI.php. That is the file I showed you at the beginning with the three functions in it. Four, is it three functions in it? So now what we've got is we're doing a select then we're going to check the num rows then we're going to loop through the result okay and we're using our functions in sqli.php to do this <coughs> so at the minute what we're doing is we're calling our query function and we're passing it this sql statement and all we're doing is we're selecting all from this table called blog and we're limiting it limiting it to 10 okay so if you have a look at that here's the query the query expects one parameter, and that's this SQL. It's just a, a string, really, I guess. So what we're doing, we're running a MySQL query using that SQL. And it's that simple, and then we're returning the result, which is here. So we're putting that query into that variable, then returning it. So from there, we can then do our next query. Well, not next query, next function, which is I've just called get num rows, and that we're passing it query. So if we look here, get num rows expects one parameter, and it returns the num rows. So this will return zero, or the number of rows there are. Um, you might think this is a bit. Pff, there's no need for this to do it this way, but. Putting them in these in these functions will mean that in the future, if anything changes, you can quickly just go to one place and change 
and change what whatever's needed to be changed. So in this instance, I'm going to show you to change it from MySQL to MySQL I. Okay. So then let's have a look. What's the next thing? So the next thing is to fetch the array. So what we're doing is we're in a what we're making a while loop here. And we're calling our fetch array function, and that is being passed our query. So fetch array. This it expects two param. Well, it's two parameters, but one is required, which is the the actual query, and the other is optional. We don't need this for MySQL, but when we do the MySQL I, we will be we will be using this. So all this is doing. We're also doing a fetch array on this query that's passed, and then we're returning that. So if I go to the page in the browser, you'll see I'm just getting 10 results here, and those are the titles of 10 blog posts. So, what we want to do is we want to switch all this up now to support MySQL I. So, first, what we'll do we we'll go into our connection.php and I'm just going to comment out the SQL stuff there and I'm going to uncomment this SQL I stuff here. So what we're doing here is we're making a connection with MySQL I connect and this time we're passing it all four parameters, all four um, constants server, normally local host, your database username, database password and the database name that you want to connect to. Okay. Then we do a little if check that says, is there a connection error? If there is, then die. And then we'll spit out this error here. If not, then all's good. What we're going to be wanting is we're going to be wanting this connection variable. So what we'll, you'll see in our function file is we're calling to that. And um, I'll show you now, actually. If you see here, we put global connection. And why we're doing that is because because if we put global, it means we can access this variable. And this variable is our connection. Okay. So let's have a look. So let's change this. So we're going to change our... Well, we've got to change them all, actually. So that's our result. So Norm rows. As you can see, they're all pretty much the same. The only one that's slightly different... Oh, this is a good tip as well. If you do a block block quote or block comment like this, normally it'll be like that. A good way of being able to uncomment it quickly is at the bottom one. Just put two slashes, and then when you want to uncomment it, you can just put one slash at the top, and it will uncomment it all. And then you can just remove that to do your block quote. Block. I keep calling it block quote. Block. Um, you know what I mean. Comment. Right, so MySQL I. So what we're doing here is we're doing a quick if check to see if this optional parameter has been passed. And the reason we're doing that is with a MySQL I, when we're fetching an array, we can just pass it the query, which is fine and it will work. But we can also pass it this optional variable. And here, you can see I've wrote it here, it can either be the constant of MySQL I underscore a sock, which will then do a MySQL I fetch associative array, which is what I'll use. Then we could pass it MySQL I num, which will be MySQL fetch row, so you'll fetch a single row. And you can also pass it MySQL I both. And this returns a single array with features of the other two. But what I use is a sock associative array. That's just my preference, it doesn't really matter, but that's what I like to use. <coughs> so, let's have a look. So, is there anything, there's nothing else we've got to change here. So, if we just have a quick look again, to do an actual query, it's pretty much exactly the same. However, this time, it's MySQL I query, and we need to pass it, the first, there's two parameters. The first one is the actual connection details. So, that is why... I'm doing this global connection here because we need to pass it where we're connecting to. And the second one is the query. So for num rows is exactly the same, but you put MySQL I instead of MySQL. And we just went through the fetch array. So let's upload that quickly. <coughs> so 
so yeah, we didn't upload this either actually. So then I think there's one change of what I'm making our example file file, and that is here yeah, I've got a comment out. So on the fetch array, as we went through that function, I showed you that it takes it can take two parameters. And I actually do want to pass it another parameter. I want to pass it this constant. So if we upload this, where's the file? It works the same as it did before. <coughs> so yeah, so this is just more of a little tip for anyone who was unsure about how you go from MySQL to MySQL I. It can be really simple, and what I would suggest is making a function file and just putting all your query related stuff into these functions so then they're always at one place where you need to change them obviously there'll be times where you may need to go into the queries pass it this parameter but if I pass that let's have a look what happens see that actually still works so you, you wouldn't even have to pass that it's just I, I like to, it's just a personal preference so yeah, so that was a quick one